The full Mueller report will be released by the Justice Department on Thursday. So hey, you'll get to use that leftover Game of Thrones party platter after all. White House, White House staffers are reportedly worried they'll be named in the Mueller report and face retaliation for it. White House staffers are reportedly worried they'll be named in the Mueller report and face retaliation for bad-mouthing Trump. This is, of course, in addition to already being named things like stupid, dummy, hey you, and dumbo ears. <laughs> Pete Buttigieg has officially entered the Democratic presidential race. Even though he's gay, I <gasps> think he should marry Saoirse Ronan just to create the world's most unpronounceable name. With just two shopping days left until the release of the full Mueller report, President Trump has claimed that the Russia probe was the greatest scam in political history. You know, right up there with Watergate, making America great again, and building a beautiful wall and getting Mexico to pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> Khloe Kardashian recently made her Instagram account private. But first, she had to explain to her family what that word means. <laughs> and finally, a White House official says when the full Mueller report gets released, it's bound to be something the media will spin as embarrassing for the president. You know, like how the media tried to make paying off a porn star who claims he has a small hog somehow sound embarrassing. <laughs> the Trump Report starts now. You're tuned in to AfterBuzz TV, the ESPN of TV talk. Now, let the buzz begin. Yes, indeed. Welcome to the Hog Report. Hog. I'm Christian Butt. Uh, we are indeed to the, Hog TV. the Trump Report. Happy to be here. Am I in the with, wrong studio? With so much yes. to talk about. I feel gross. Uh, well, you know, there's so much to, you know, this is the perfect week for there to be gum under the desk. Let's just put it that way. I am Christian Butt, joined as always by... Chelsea Galicia. And... Tamara Brown. Way down on the far end of the desk. Scott Moore. Look at that, the whole family yeah. here together, which is great. Uh, so much to talk about. Uh, Chelsea, it must have been a little bit of a dilemma for you. One, a Bernie Sanders town hall, but two... It was on Fox News Channel. Well, you know, I've been trying to watch Fox News little pieces at a time when I can work up the patience. Sure. <laughs> now, the first question is, did you watch? I actually didn't watch the whole thing. Oh, this, have you watched some? This, so. this weekend, I actually watched the, the town halls of Marianne Williamson and <laughs> Andrew Yang. Those were uh, for fake news CNN, right? Yes. Yeah, so we're not going to talk about those. <laughs> Uh, I believe I read an article about them in the failing New York Times and the Amazon Washington Post. But uh, I think that, uh, you know, there's a, a lot of attention being paid to. It is just one key moment in the town hall, and I, I didn't watch it, but I, I saw this little video clip on the Daily Mail. So. I saw it many a time. Yeah. Uh, so Bernie Sanders, Chelsea's friend, mm -hmm. uh, scored a viral moment when a Rust Belt crowd, and that was in Pennsylvania, cheered for single-payer health care on a Fox News town hall. Uh, so I think it's interesting that, you socialists. know. Socialists. Well, it's interesting, yeah, that they're socialists in Pennsylvania, obviously. I think it would have been more interesting if it was somewhere... You know, if he was in, in, like, just a deep red territory, I think that you could certainly get a room full of people that are like, oh, yeah, yeah, we, you know, we want a wall, but we want that health care, too. So uh, who's going to give us both of those things? Um, so I want to just talk generally about it. But my, the first thing I'm thinking is it's very smart on the half of uh, Bernie's campaign to do a town hall for Fox News because, it, like, President Trump, you've got your base – and then you've got the, I don't know, let's just say 35 to 40% of people who hate you so much they will never vote for you no matter what. You do want to reach out to some other people. I don't see him doing that. Uh, Bernie, I think, is not someone that is a favorite in the Fox News demo. So I think that, you know, might be hard to believe for some people, but I do think that there are a number of independents and moderates who that is the channel they watch. So I think it was very smart. Um, what do you think, one, about him deciding to do this for Fox News, but then also that moment that we've uh, heard so much about, Chelsea? Well, last week I was saying about how, like, I don't believe anymore that reasonable people should go on Fox News and try and debate with some of these hosts because they're kind of just used as props for their, like, punchlines. Um, but I do think that for Bernie it was a good call, but I don't think any other 
reasonable, like liberal person should be trying to go on Fox News to try and well, defend. I mean, I think there's a world there's a world of difference between doing a town hall with Brett Baer. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Chris Wallace is great on Fox yep. News Sunday. There, there, you know, yes, you can say that there's a short list, but you certainly shouldn't do the personality driven. You know, the Laura Ingrams, the Sean Hannity. Uh, I mean, like if you could get a small portion somehow, if Bernie can get, I don't know, a, a small portion of uh, Sean Hannity's audience on board, I guess it'd be worth it to do like eight minutes. But like an hour town hall moderated by, uh, I, I believe it was Martha McCallum. Yeah. I, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think that, uh, you know, that's, that's, right, that's the right mm -hmm. setting. Yeah. You know, I think uh, it was very smart. And look, I think that anybody who considers themselves a, a front runner of the, the Democratic primaries, it's uh, it's not a bad idea to do one of these town halls because I, I believe they're being left out of the debates, but uh, it, it's not going to, I don't know. I mean, unless you're going to show up and not have your bag packed at all and not be ready for, you know, so, you know Bernie was clearly prepared mm -hmm. for uh, the dirty uh, socialism word. Uh, Tamara, what do you think about uh, Bernie appearing on on uh, on well on the Fox News Channel? I certainly think they're more willing to listen to him as a white male than they would uh, some of the other Democratic candidates. Ooh. So seriously, I mean, you, he he probably had their ears more than Kamala or Cory Booker or Elizabeth Warren would have. So interesting. Point yeah, um, Scott, mm -hmm. do you see any potential downfall from, uh, not that that's what happened, but what what are some of the uh, the dangers uh, for, no, sorry, for Democratic primary candidates in doing this specific format? We're not talking about a Sean Hannity interview. So doing this like one hour long town hall sort of thing. What, what do you think some of the, if, if you were an advisor to uh, one of the campaigns, or maybe even all the campaigns, what uh, would you tell them to be uh, uh, most concerned about? Well, I think kind of what Chelsea was saying is that it could be used as a prop, like you could use some of the sound bites that he said and twist it around and, and claim socialism and start drilling that on more of those entertainment shows like Sean Hannity and, and some of those nighttime shows. But I do think it was good for him to go, because as we know, especially in Pennsylvania and the upper Midwest, we had a lot of uh, Obama voters who voted for Obama twice that voted for Trump right. in 2016. So those people are very malleable. And because he because Trump won by such a slim margin with the upper Midwest, it wouldn't take a lot of those voters to shift back into the Democratic column next year. And so I think it was very smart of him to go. And kind of going on to what Tamara said, too, I think, unfortunately, an older straight white male would get more attention on there than, say, someone else coming in like Kamala Harris where they might just discount her right away. So I think it was a smart move. I think it was important for uh, for him to go out and, and try to win some of those voters because, as you said, too, there's a lot of moderates. There's a lot of independents, people that maybe voted for Trump that weren't hugely passionate about him but didn't really like Hillary and, again, were Obama voters who would be willing to vote for a Democratic candidate again next year. Um, in those places in the upper Midwest. So it was a, it was a smart place to go, uh, probably more than, like you said, going to Alabama or somewhere else. I think that was a, a very smart move on his part and his campaign. I also think because Bernie also has that kind of no-nonsense, curmudgeon -y attitude that he is a person that would be able to combat any sort of anybody turning him into a prop right. and, like, setting him up to give some sort of, like, failed answer. He'd be the one that would be like, come on! Yeah. But what I'm just saying, get, well, get out, you know. I mean, later, you know, when they, they take the sound bites out later afterwards and mm -hmm. then they're using it. But I will say a lot of the people on Fox News, when I looked on the comments, actually had a lot of positive things to say about him. They said, you know, we came across as authentic and on honest, may not agree with him, we wouldn't vote for him. But, you know, he said some, he had some good points. And, and so it was actually kind of refreshing to see that there was a lot of positive feedback as well in the comment section for him being on uh, kudos on to show. you for wading into the comment section <laughs> on a, a whole uh, new Fox level News of video. I mean that you know it's one thing to be on Twitter and uh, get into uh, fisticuffs way, with by, Mitch McConnell but by the way Scott does think the earth is flat now but yeah, yeah of oh course I'm sorry <laughs> that only took is, two minutes of watching is, Fox is, is there <laughs> any other way to think about the earth that you're talking about it like there's something ridiculous about that Tamara which I don't appreciate no I'm just <laughs> stating a fact oh that he's come on board mm -hmm. now and he's yeah. ready for yes. the I, I, yes. uh, President Trump, uh, you know, the the nicknames are starting to need a little bit more work. He uh, slammed crazy Bernie Sanders uh, after, you know, basically the, the clip that we're talking about. I'm sure President Trump didn't watch, but I also am sure that they talked about it on Fox and Friends the next morning. So he uh, claimed, President <laughs> Trump claimed, that uh, the anchors and the cheering audience were being nice. Uh, 
mm-hmm. which, you know, I mean, if there's anything that Donald Trump knows about, it's a, a debate and being nice during it and, <laughs> you know, not uh, alleging that, you know, Megyn Kelly was so hostile because it was that time of the month. So, he, you know, obviously he knows that debates are a very nice place and uh, there's there's nothing but decorum there. Um, I don't, uh, you know, I don't, I don't think... I think that by not asking a series of gotcha questions, sure, you could say like, oh, come on, they, they didn't really uh, pressure him. They spoon-fed him. Yeah, but there's a there's a level of like... They spoon-fed him creamed corn to the 80-year-old man. Yes. Which, you know, I think if you think about the fact that, uh, you know, this is cable news, there, I believe that there were creamed corn commercials during the mm-hmm. broadcast, along with, you know, getting your monthly supply of uh, catheter and, you know, I mean, all these things that you'll see there. But... Uh, I think that I don't know. There's, there's. You need to be some level of nice, you know. I think that uh, there's also there's not really much to be gained by by not being nice. And uh, I don't know. I just think President Trump sees a clip of someone getting applause that isn't him, and he <laughs> yeah. just gets very upset. <laughs> you know, as, as as much as he says he hates. Alec Baldwin's impression of him, I think he's like, yeah, but that applause is really for me. So I, I think that uh, that that doesn't really bother him as much. Did you really catch the much. comment at the very end of Trump's tweet about Bernie Sanders? It was like he threw it in, and it said, "And now we have Don Brazil." Yes, Brazil. I was just going to comment on that too. We. That's yes. exactly yeah. what I was going to say. Well, I wrote back to that. I said, so I guess it is true that Fox News is now a state-sponsored propaganda channel. Because he did say, we. What did he say? Now we have what? Now we have Donna, Donna Brazil. 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 Who's Donna Brazil works Donna Brazil? Oh, with Fox oh, News now. okay. And mm-hmm. so who is Donna Brazil going to feed debate questions to now that she works for Fox oh, yeah. News? Mm-hmm. So that's, that's you know, did she <laughs> get, what did she give Bernie? You know. Uh, so I don't know. I mean, I think that... Uh, I would say that's more that President Trump takes ownership over Fox News than uh, you know than they're willing to. I don't think he would deny that. I mean, like as no, much he as, like, his, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but, as I, like, but I think his, they they would they would deny it. You know, at least Shep Smith would. Uh, so, but that we that's yeah. a pretty powerful mm-hmm. we yeah. right there. Yes, it no, is. That, that's true. Yeah. Uh, so I, I alluded to this at the top of the show. Uh, you know, we do have, as I said, only two more shopping days until the full Mueller report had <laughs> come out, and when it's released. Uh, look, I, I think that anybody that thinks that it, it's going to have to come out without anything redacted just doesn't understand the nature of these sort of things. There's a lot of reasons why things are going to be. But what I like is that the redactions are going to be color coded. So you're like, well, this is top secret. This is, you know, all these different reasons why. But apparently, you can pre order it now on yep. Amazon. Mm-hmm. Uh, so who I'm, has it? Who I'm has going it in the car already? Okay. I am going to tonight. And will it? Yes. I, I, I'm going to assume you want the Kindle version. You don't want the the like collection of like phone books to show. <laughs> no, up I want the, the phone books. You do want the phone yeah. books, and then I'll donate to the library <laughs> the, afterwards. The audio book read by Steve Jim. <laughs> Paul Giamatti. Oh Paul Giamatti. Paul Giamatti. Yeah. Yes. Paul G. Murray would do a great job. That would be great. Let's well, make I, that happen. Uh, it might be too. I don't want you to hurt your back bringing it here in the studio, <laughs> but I want you to take a picture of, of you holding well, it, and, and you can we'll tweet see, it we'll... out. Uh, but uh, so I don't know. I mean, it's supposed to come out on Thursday. Mm-hmm. Knowing Amazon, it'll be there what Thursday at like twelve o three a.m. You know, I, like, I hope like, so. like, an Amazon drone is going <laughs> to drop it off with yep. a, with a little parachute. Uh, so I don't know. I mean, I think that obviously there are a lot of people that were. A little underwhelmed by what we've heard of the Mueller report now, uh, up until this point. Uh, I, I still don't think there's going to be the kind of things in there that uh, people are hoping for. But, uh, Tamara, realistic expectations. Do you, you have to figure there's something in there that's at least embarrassing to President Trump. But to what level do you think, uh, in terms of the revelations in there? You think, well, it's going to be a huge disappointment for anybody that's hoping there's going to be something mm-hmm. slightly salacious or embarrassing or anything. I think at really, this point we've slightly. We've, I think we've we've I've I've learned not to get excited uh, at this point that anything. Yeah, I mean, no, there's not going to be what a White House staffer could have called him. A bad name, and somebody's going to get fired. That's no news, you know. So I don't know. I don't. I don't see anything 
worthy coming. I don't I don't see any reason for me personally to get excited about this. Have you also pre-ordered it from Amazon Tamara or you're just going to you're just going to read it. You're going to read over. You're going to read over uh, Scott's shoulder. I'm going to read it and I'm going to give her a summary. Okay. So great. that's you, are you, what are you I saying? don't order anything on Amazon. I never use Amazon and I also I think that's the reason why like whenever friends complain about targeted ads like in their Facebook feed and stuff like that, I never get anything that's like catered to my interests in any way at all and I think it's I I, I don't know. One can't not have to do with the other. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, obviously that uh, company is is very fixated on that. I mean, there, you, if you have a conversation in front of your Alexa, it's not even something you asked her. Mm-hmm. It's like, hey, look, there's an ad for that idea that I said, like, oh boy, I wish I could go on vacation somewhere. Look at all these places that I can't afford to go. <laughs> uh, Scott, uh, so you uh, you've got it pre-ordered, yes, but well, uh, well. realistic expectations for what's in there. Well, I think part of the issue is because. I think there's going to be a lot of stuff that's going to be redacted that it's going to be hard to get a good idea of what's in there. I'm going to be very surprised. You know, Barr claimed, oh, I'm not going to redact anything with him. It's only non-office holders and things with the grand jury. They're still ongoing. Uh, but what, is, I, what, are we, what does redact actually mean? Hide? Uh, no, I mean, it's, it's like if you've yeah. ever seen, you know, classified files in a movie. And... It's, it's literally blacked out, but then these are the yeah. color-coded. Uh, and, again, there's four... It's in pig co- Latin, certain sentences. It's in four you different to... colors that are blacked out. Okay. Um, yeah. Depending uh, uh, on what uh, they mean. Yeah, but... Ashin Ray Illusion K. Yeah. It's in there. <laughs> and it, it, it doesn't mention Russian collusion at all. It's just got the pig Latin. But, that, but anyway, go ahead. No, but I was going to say, they're... they're Obviously, must still be concerned because Trump has to continuously tweet about it every day in the lead up to it. Because, again, if he was fully exonerated, as he said, he would just leave it alone. You would think, again, if this was not a big deal and there was nothing in there at all, again, we don't know what's going to be in there. And a lot, I still believe, is going to be redacted. And I do think Congress should be able to see everything uh, unredacted because that they are a co-equal branch of government. They're not below a president. They should, you know, and again, Barr works for all of us, not for a president, even though he's essentially appointed by him. Um, so I think there are still going to be questions, but I'm not expecting anything major because, of course, we already have the bar summary, which claims there's nothing to see here sort of thing. So I don't think he's going to let anything too damaging go out about him. Um, but I do find it interesting that Trump continuously tweets about it like, you know. That's true. It doesn't sound like someone who's completely innocent to me or not concerned to some aspects. You know, when you started talking about him tweeting, it made me realize it's been a long time since one of his tweets has ended with sad exclamation. It has. I, I use it a lot more now. Yeah, but I, but in I, mine. I, you know, I think he needs to bring it back. <laughs> uh, I think that this will be the issue that brings it. So, Chelsea, we did talk about that. It's color coded. There are four colors. What color do you think would be the one that makes the most sense if you're redacting something that would incriminate him of having committed a high crime or misdemeanor? What color do you think would be the best one to use to redact that? Wow, I'm really asked the tough questions. Yes, on the show. well, you can get asked. You can you can also give your real opinion after, but I, I think that this is this Pass. is what people are tuning in for. Pass. <laughs> yeah. Wow, I'm not creative the, enough for this. The cor- like, no answer. comment. The correct answer is orange. Because it ties uh, directly into the yes. president. Mm-hmm. But uh, I'm sorry, Circle gets the square. <laughs> but uh, next question goes to Chelsea. Uh, again, realistic expectations for what, what is in here. Because I feel like you're still holding out hope. Okay. I, I think I'm going to swing a little bit to the other side of that side of the table. <laughs> and um, I don't know if the right word is excited. But I do think that there is going to be Anticipation. something of material interest. Should we just call it that? Material interest. Mm-hmm. I like that. And uh, that's, so, our, that's our Jerry Springer sound effect. <laughs> <laughs> so I think because so many people had gotten themselves really hyped up mm-hmm. for the summary and then got let down so much, people are trying to prepare themselves to be let down again. So people are like, whatever, I don't care, I don't care, I'm not, <laughs> you know, not excited. Um, but that is when exciting things come out. So I don't, I, you know, realistically, not all of a sudden now on Thursday, he's not going to be, you know, escorted out in cuffs. I don't think that was never going to happen, even though some people... What about zip ties instead of handcuffs? Do you think that's possible? Uh, or you maybe like when you're going to and he... Oh, yeah. And I, got a, and I got a wristband. Wait, were your, were your hands bound together no, or just, just a wristband? Like wristband. Just like, like a club. Just like to prove going that you're over yes. twenty-one. Yeah, yes. Exactly. And the yeah. cop asked, "Is this too tight?" And I'm like, "Dude, you're ruining my story here." But <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. you're ruining your story. Don't tell us those details. Capital police are like very well trained. I would say nice would cops. Sure. 
Uh, so, yeah, I so think... So everybody good. should read it with interest, mm -hmm. and I... I mean, 400 pages is not going to be so much fun to yeah, read, exactly. but I think people should try because sort of both sides of the media will just quote whatever is a benefit to them. It's and like it's the gonna, Bible. And it's going to be <laughs> like two different reports yeah. came out. So I think we should all read it for ourselves. Yeah. This is the new book club of yeah, America. That, that's why I'm Wait, getting it. Oprah's book club? Is this going to be the <laughs> official entry? Fifty in Shades of Muller. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, Get I think America's literate again. I think yes. that uh, the Bible's probably an accurate comparison. I feel like there'll be a lot of begats in here that are uh, getting <laughs> redacted. But um, I, I was just wondering about, you know, we know that uh, Barr's read it. Probably not that many people have read it. What do you think the chances are, uh, Tamara, that the people who've read it so far didn't understand everything, so that maybe they forgot to redact something that's like, oh, wait, this is actually, you know, this one nugget is actually really good. It's just uh, the the words were too big for uh, Barr to sound out and understand Barr's what they not meant. a stupid guy. I, I know, like, but for, just for the sake of this conversation. Me, I'm dumb. I'm still not fully understanding what redacting means. So there's going to be color-coded parts to it of meaning like yeah. this is a little bit more incriminating possibly. So it's going to be this color yeah, or whatever. It'll be crossed we out. Can, we can't read we it. We can't read yeah, it. Yeah, it'll, it'll, it'll so, be, I mean, it would be so blacked out. So it's not out, the but, full report. We're not getting the full report. Right, but I, right. I think that anything that's been classified for any reason, there, there's very little comes out. It, it completely intact, especially to the general public, you know. Uh, and then there are probably levels like, well, what so is your security <laughs> clearance? Can you read this? Can you not read this? You know, I mean, it, who knows, you know, anything about intelligence gathering, I think, shouldn't be something that, that we can read. You know, it's like, well, let me tell you how we find out what Russian hookers are up to. Yeah. We yeah. go into Minsk. Anyway, uh, so I so that's, that's is what's going to be like, like, I'd love it if it's like a... Um, Trump uh, staffer says Trump was in the Oval Office on a phone call with Putin wearing no pants and playing with his blank. It's like an ad lib. It's like a wacky Mad Lib. <laughs> Dirty. Yeah, That's like, what's it, redacted. It's, it's like, like the, just word here, word there, instead of like full paragraphs. Right. It's like the old uh, the old game show password that you mm -hmm. can see on the game show network. You can decide what actually uh, President Trump has in his lap at a given point. Now, Chelsea, you are going to like a question from the chat. Um, oh. that's, uh, I just want you to summarize quickly from Lady Goth wants to know if any of us watched the town halls of Yang and Williamson. And I yeah. know that you did. I did. Mm -hmm. So uh, since we were talking about the Bernie town hall, let, let's not spend too much time on this, but I'd be interested to hear what your big takeaways were from, from each of them. Uh, Marianne said exactly what I And explain I who Marianne is. I think that she's not a household name. Okay, Marianne Williamson is a, I think a spiritual author would be, and speaker would yeah, be right. sort of the most succinct way to say it. I volunteered on her campaign in 2014 when she ran for now Ted Lou's seat when, when he was running for it and Henry Waxman had retired. Um, and so she said much of the same thing in this town hall that she said in her stump speech five years ago so she's consistent um but i, I and as much as kind of a, a, a personal sort of i guess falling out i feel that that we have had i still believe in her message i don't believe that she's the one to see us through in this capacity as president but i do think that she has important things to say for people to hear um, a, a different way of looking at politics than i think most of us do so i think important and i think people should watch it even if they before now didn't know who she was she's apparently pretty close ish to getting on the debate stage she needs i think like 10 15 thousand more individual contributors so Andrew Yang, I had first heard about on from the Joe Rogan podcast, and uh, that made me. You listen to the Joe Rogan podcast? I just I saw his name on there, and I, I'd heard of him very briefly, and so I. Listened, I can't but I listen don't, to the Joe Rogan. I don't podcast. generally. I mean, I just listen when David Lee Roth rambles for three hours, or Elon Musk smokes weed. You know, I mean, there, there's a there's a there's a box that I check as to whether it, or not I'm. It I comes might in my Tesla for free, and so I scroll. I'm like, <laughs> oh, Andrew, I, yes. And his um, explanation of why a freedom dividend or the universal basic income um, is, is needed was really thoroughly and well explained on the podcast, more so than I feel he was able to do 
do in the town hall. And then unfortunately, they spent a lot of time of the town hall answering questions that he's not, he's not really, he's running for president he would like to win, but he has said on the podcast that he would not run if it were somebody else that were carrying this message and truly mm-hmm. understood the issues facing us due to automation. What is his job? What is he? Who? What is he his job? He was an entrepreneur and he helped, he helped as a businessman uh, create other businesses. And he said at some point he, you know, thought, wow, I'm so proud of myself. I've helped create businesses that have helped employ a lot of people, but in the same time, many, many, many more jobs were lost at the same time. So he was kind of, you know, trying to fill a bathtub with a giant hole in it. And so he, you know, knows about the the problem of automation and how widespread of a problem that's going to be. And so he believes that the best you know, solution to it is that we all receive $1,000 a month, every American over the age of 18, no matter what your income is. Uh, And then a lot of his policies ideas sort of stemmed from that, but they tried to ask him questions that were not related enough to it. So he would have a decent answer, but that's, those are not where he's really going to shine. I wish that they would have known coming in, like, this is his thing and let him just talk about it. But he's a a funny guy and he had a great line, like, the the opposite of President Trump is an Asian who likes math. I mean, he got his (laughs) That is pretty funny. Mm -hmm. And um, I I think also, you know, even if if he doesn't end up being president uh, or win the nomination even, that people should still listen to him because he's got... really something important and i think especially this far out it's why it's good for someone like him to do these town halls because you know uh let's let's be kind and say it's a it's a it's an uphill battle for uh, someone like him and and, but getting the ideas out there i think is is the important part right he's already gotten himself on the debate stage though all right Mm -hmm. so uh yeah and you know the here it is. It's April. Those debates are uh, a lot sooner than than you think uh, they will be. Uh, let's uh, move on before we uh, start to run out of time. Uh, it is indeed time for our feature that is uh, taking the nation by storm. I will uh, ask you first, Scott. Good week, bad week. Julian Assange. <laughs> Has he had better weeks than this? He's definitely had better weeks, yeah. <laughs> Follow-up question. Who wore it better, uh, that beard? Uh, him or Yukon Cornelius from the Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer Christmas special? Well, definitely Cornelius. Yeah, I mean, I mean so. without yeah. a doubt. Yeah. You couldn't, that, that's I know. That, that was yes kind of a trick him. question, that but uh, <laughs> I, I, wanted to, I wanted to test you with that one. <laughs> definitely. Uh, so... Or you're yeah. talking about like Bro- the snowman too, because the Burl Ives had the great. That's true. He, you know, he had like a like Van, the little Van Yeah, yes, yeah. The Van Gogh kind of like little. That was pretty impressive. Uh, so <laughs> Julian Assange, uh, obviously a very uh, divisive figure, um, and I don't know. A very divisive rapist. Sure. Yeah, Alleg- but I mean, even of, before, even allegedly. before, yeah, even before those uh, those allegations, uh, already a divisive figure, mm-hmm. and you know when the uh, embassy of uh, Ecuador is. Uh, inexplicably kind enough to put you up for six months kind of the only thing you need to not do is circulate six months i meant six years yeah the kind of the only thing to not do is uh, circulate a photo of the president of uh, ecuador eating lobster in bed and uh well you just couldn't resist that uh that opportunity so uh just a general thought scott and we'll all talk about this about WikiLeaks and what Julian Assange, less about him, this go around, but about the work that WikiLeaks does. Uh, what are your thoughts, just on the whole, about uh, you know the fact that uh, he's he's wanted uh, on I don't know number of charges for distributing classified information? Yeah, well, I mean, it. I, I think, like you were saying, it, the presidency, the president had changed since he originally went in to the embassy there, so this new president was not really a big fan of his to start with so then you you throw in all these other yeah. issues and you yeah know, i mean and apparently the people at the embassy were not a big fan right. of his either um, yeah. yeah which we've heard a lot of stories at this yeah. point about his hygiene and the cat and cooking and roller skating whatever but you know it, the the whole wikileaks thing is is a very fine line because on one hand you you always do want a whistleblower to be able to speak up when really bad things are going on but on the other hand you have to balance what kind of information you're taking and what you're doing and what you're accessing and releasing out to the public so it, it's a very fine line of what they've done in the past and um you know it, he's crossed that line a few times and uh, 
it, it's just going to be dependent on the charges that actually happen. Um, as long as it's not going to affect the freedom of the press and journalism rights uh, for how you know they work with sources and everything, that's going to be the the most important thing that comes out of it. Here is is what charges will end up actually happening and and what he gets charged with because that's that is a big concern about how whistleblowers work and also um, you know having uh, being able to have the freedom to be able to work with people um, you know on the record and everything so. Right, and I, I think that there's a, a fine line for an out-and-out out whistleblower. I mean, you can make similar, mm -hmm. uh, you can ask similar questions about someone like Edward Snowden. Uh, you you feel like there is, you know, some of what they do. It's like, well, this is good that this information got out, but especially in Assange's case, it's like, well, there's a lot of stuff in there mm -hmm. that none of us should know. To you know, getting back to how certain things need to be redacted from the Mueller report. I mean, there's. There's all sorts of things that uh, you know have been posted on WikiLeaks that WikiLeaks that we shouldn't know, but you know, I mean, I, I, then sometimes it's fun to read like the hacked Sony emails, you know, for, because that's show business, and, and no one's really getting hurt by that. Um, what do you think? Uh, <laughs> People there would beg to differ. <laughs> I, it, 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 it didn't hurt me. Let's put it that way. Uh, what do you uh, What do you think about? Assange, again, the work of WikiLeaks uh, in general, uh, Chelsea, and compared to someone like Edward Snowden. Yeah, well, I'm very much like in the camp with Scott where this is not a really cut and dry, like, you know, he's, uh, you know, a, uh, he's betrayed us and mm -hmm. he should, you know, off with his head for, for treason versus, you know, he's a journalist. I, you know, I, I don't know. It's, it's, and it, it, it's on, on some um, releases of information, it's like, okay, this feels more journalistic, and on others, it feels more like, okay, possibly treasonous. So it's it's difficult to assess one person when the individual information kind of seems like it could be um, treated differently. I, I, this one is is hmm. a pretty tough one for me to to right. feel so any you, you, strongly. But you can about feel you. So you feel some way. of what was released was wrong, but then at the same time, it's like, well, some of the stuff. It, it is important that it got out there. Uh, Tamara, uh, it's uh, widely reported before this that uh, for some reason, Pamela Anderson took up the cause of Julian Assange. Pamela Anderson, who, as we know, previously married to uh, Motley Crue drummer Tommy oh, Lee and uh, rocker Kid Rock. Uh, does she just want to make sure that we understand that she has incredibly bad taste in men and and just wants to make sure that there's there's no two ways about that? Uh, that that's the important question, but also your general You're thoughts. You're asking me if Pamela Anderson has bad taste in men? <laughs> just she wants to make sure we know. No, no, no. I file this under questions you never thought you'd hear on the front I, I feel like... I, I mean, if, like you don't, if you didn't think that question would come up on this show, then you're clearly not watching this show. Not paying attention. Julian is... Assange is disgusting, a uh, pig of a human being. I fully believe that I, I don't even, I'm no journalist. There's no reason for me to dip, be diplomatic. I don't need to use the word allegedly when I call him a rapist. I think he's disgusting. Uh, I think that is a far cry different than uh, Tommy Lee, who, you know, I don't really see anything wrong with him in any way other than he's probably, you know, Partied too hard. Um, a little bit. Yeah. Kid, Kid Rock is, um, for whatever strange reason, a Republican now. Even though he was playing golf with President Trump last week, so I, I'm sure he's like one of these guys that uh, supports Trump and and is on um, that team only because he doesn't pay that close attention to politics and he just is tired of people telling him he can't say this and can't say that and so he's in favor of the the uh, uh, people are too sensitive now people are too pc i'm behind trump and those people drive me insane for not taking the time to understand what they're supporting uh follow up question uh kid rock president <laughs> ted nugent vice president or vice versa um i feel like <laughs> they have a, a better chance than <laughs> Marianne Williamson. Marianne Williamson, uh, Marianne yeah. Williamson yeah. from so we, we, didn't nice. even, we didn't even yeah. mention Marianne Williamson is in the Oprah universe. I don't I don't pay attention to comic book uh, world, but uh, I, I don't know Marvel oh. versus DC. But I do appreciate the Oprah universe. You've got your Doctor Phils and your yeah. Doctor Oz's. And Wait, this, this she's is in a the well, I, no, no, but, so, <laughs> but, but it's true. Oprah does have people who are in her orbit, and uh, Marion is some one she's, who is. She's in, she's in the yes. Oprah universe. Um, yeah. I, I'm more in the Povich universe, although to some degree, we are all the Oprah universe. Now, I mean, 
I, I would give. Um, I, I do appreciate that. Didn't when when Assange leaked the the photo of the Ecuadorian president in bed eating lobster. lobster. Yes. Uh, he did caption it, "Feeling cute, we'll delete later." Right? Didn't he? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think that that you know that is getting buried under the headlines. Mm -hmm. uh, before. But speaking. Oh wait, sorry. Speak. I liked this question about president, vice president. Can we play that game now? Who. Who, with, Here, here's an idea. Let's let's that. play that next week Ooh. because we I do want to talk about I do want to talk about the plan that President Trump has of uh, sending uh, illegal immigrants uh, to the sanctuary cities and uh, this idea of whether or not that's legal. Whether you know uh, you know we live in an age where the president can get into a back and forth on Twitter with share and. You know, oh. ten years ago, that would have seemed obscene so at share. Mm -hmm. Yes, obviously, uh, <laughs> but uh, also someone who has great taste in men. Share. I thought somebody hacked her account. Is what I first thought when that when she she posted that. Right. So uh, let's start with Chelsea. Uh, this will be our our final topic uh, oh. for today. But uh, just the, this idea of these sanctuary cities, and it's like, well, uh, why don't you take some of these people that we don't know what to do with? Now, this is, of course, that's the way President Trump is characterizing it. Uh, just give us your thoughts on all of it. You don't have to comment on share, but uh, if you'd like to, you're welcome to. I will. Uh, yeah. Okay, then I'll say that. Her, hers is going to be all too. share. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. well, it, it, it's, it's clearly illegal, but that's never stopped him before. So I don't know what else there is to say about that. He he may do it and he may not. Who? But so then, just from knows? a logistics standpoint, if you are mayor, city council of, let's say, a city like San Francisco, and then it's like, all right, so then buses show up, uh, you know, uh, and I don't know, they drop they drop them off on Market Street in San Francisco. You know, what then? I, you know, I would love it if somehow, like, people of the city of L.A., like, came together and figured this out. I mean, I don't know. Maybe everybody goes in to their storage units and, like, pulls out all the crap from their storage units and makes, like, you know, nice little temporary housing transform it. I mean, do you, you know how to much, put them in cages, Chelsea? Do you know how much space we have on personal storage uh, items by that the could way, be, like, must, transformed mu into, like, micro apartments if we cared enough to do that? Must be nice to have personal storage, by the way. <laughs> I <laughs> do not, and I do not advocate for having personal yeah. storage. It's a bit of a waste, but if you see the numbers on how many people yeah. have personal I mean, there oh, yeah. is... It's crazy how many people are spending every month for years and years and years for these spaces. Sure, and they but take up a lot of make it, They make it clear no living. There's, you know, like they, people would be. Yeah, I mean, I found that out the hard that. way. Yeah, uh, when I try to get plumbing, a pizza climate control. There. A lot of people have like band practice in those storage units. Yeah. I've heard. Yeah, okay. that's a great idea. Be loud but, and but I, I, but I think that sanctuary cities are creative enough, hopefully, and that maybe even though we haven't been able to get a handle on our own homelessness crisis, that this extra push, load, push will, you know, foster, you know, new yeah. creativity that has yet to be unearthed. I, I also think that we could agree. I can, I agree that we can handle, Los Angeles could handle being a sanctuary city and more people busted into us because the homeless epidemic that we are currently under is a very complicated issue and there's no one solution. Um, there's various reasons we, for, for immigrants who just, migrants who just don't have a place to be, they're actually a little bit easier to house than a homeless person who has reasons such as not willing to conform to a, uh, uh, a health drug cleanup plan or not willing to show up to their ca their caseworker who is trying to put them in a housing and they don't show up and I I'm certainly not blaming homeless people any anyway. I'm just saying there's various no, there's but reasons, that's a more complicated there's complicated situation, issues sure. and there's reasons why even though there is certain housing available, some we we aren't able to just filter people immediately into the available housing that we do have and migrants will be a little bit easier to do that with. So I think we could handle, and, and through various other ways, ha be able to handle being a sanctuary city. The thing about Cher yes. that drives me crazy is what people do. First of all, she's, I don't know why she suddenly took up that platform when she's, you know, been very, very far left on most every issue. Um, and somehow she's like, we can't take care of our own people and saying, uh, and, and, and 
the thing that really got under my skin is because she, when she mentioned the people that we can't, homeless people that we can't take care of ourselves, she says a lot of including veterans. And that to me, I get so irritated as somebody who works with veterans and spends a lot of my time devoted to um, veterans organizations. I get very irritated when people use veterans as a prop to promote whatever issue that they're trying to uh, it, just by saying veterans means I'm somehow more patriotic or more American or love this country more than you. And they're usually just using veterans as a prop because the fact of the matter is housing is available in the state of California to veterans immediately. But again, it's an issue of there's reasons of, you know, some people don't want to um, commit to the the um, procedures that they have to follow in order to get into the housing. Sometimes it's as simple as they have a dog and the dog they're not allowed to take the dog into the housing. When people say, why is there veterans on the streets when, when we're going to put how immigrants in housing? It's like there's or that. Frankly, there's the veteran is choosing to be on the street because there is housing available if they're willing to take it. Um, there's, I, it's a little, again, more complicated sure. than that, but um, for her to just make that statement is ignorant, frankly. Uh, Follow-up question, Scott, do you believe in life after love? <laughs> I do. Okay, good. Um, and, and I will, I, I will the couple points, um, I will say that, you know, also a lot of homeless people out here come from other states, so you talk about not necessarily immigrants, but you're talking about migrants. A lot of people come from red states. They they come across the country. They come here for the climate. They escape the cold weather. Like you said, Tamara, there's a lot of reasons why there's homeless people. Um, I think also what Cher said, she tried to fix it later, and she was basically saying that Trump was using his revenge and going to drop off everybody in California and not spread it around. Thirdly, I think, you know, what Trump did was just guttural trash like normal. Um, I think it's weaponizing innocent people for whatever political revenge. Um, and, and it's uh, childish and it's stupid and it makes him, again, uh, look like a complete uninformed idiot uh, to even suggest something like that. Um, so, you know, I, I do agree with you, though, Tamara. I think there, there are ways that we could um, accept some of those immigrants and help um, – take care of them while they're waiting for their asylum hearings. Um, but the way of him doing that again, that was just, again, complete garbage like like he is as a, as a person. So And again, we could s- decide to stop doing drugs and we can decide to pay farmers. <laughs> I mean, you can decide to stop f- doing drugs if you want to. <laughs> don't look but over I here. But I don't have any to stop doing. Like, <laughs> well, that makes then, it easy. Then you need yeah. to Christian, start. Christian snorts yeah. a bump right That's, now. That, <laughs> the camera yeah. pans but, away. But, but, also, yeah. but also, you know, can if, if there was a way that we could actually pay Mexican farm workers like a livable wage for the for the things that they grow for us you know maybe they wouldn't have to leave maybe they could defend themselves protect themselves against you know the well cartel. I mean then that's a more direct issue too is you know, just the amount of subsidies we're giving to our own farmers so uh, mm-hmm. I, I don't I, them out of work right uh, so and again because I, I feel like in the interest of equal time we also need to point out the truly bad judgment that Cher has had over the years, uh, dating Gene Simmons of Kiss, uh, marrying Dwayne Allman and having no idea he was a heroin addict. There's more. But uh, my favorite was the uh, guy who worked in the bagel store. Anyway, uh, just again, you know, I don't, I don't, uh, don't want to just have uh, Pamela Anderson's people be like, hey, why so hard on Pam? In any case, uh, that is actually where we're going to leave it today. Thank God. <laughs> Uh, oh but uh, we, because we are out of time, but there's uh, there's so much more to talk about, and uh, we will do that next week. Uh, until then, Chelsea, where do people find you? At Chelsea Galicia. And Tamara? Uh, at, at Hey Tamara underscore. And Scott? You can find me on Twitter at SMAN80. That's SMAN80. Probably calling Mitch a hypocritical turtle or Trump an orange clown. Uh, and uh, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Christian DMZ. The show is at Trump Report ABTV. And you can find me here on AfterBuzz TV Thursday night at 10 Pacific. It'll be the second season finale of Star Trek Discovery. And I'm also doing the new Twilight Zone after show wow. here on AfterBuzz TV. So if I start doing the good fight, I'll have the hat trick of everything from CBS All Access. But that's all the time we have now. Thanks so much to everybody in the chat. Uh, we'll see you next week. Thanks. Bye. Bye.
Our founder, Kevin Undergaro, and me, Maria Menunos, would like to thank you for tuning in to AfterBuzz TV. Remember, we're not just the first, we're the biggest in the world, and we're the only destination for all your favorite TV shows. Whatever you crave, we've got it. So go to AfterBuzzTV.com and check out our lineup. Buzz you later. <laughs> the views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principal.